Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to properly pin insects. Uh, there's many different ways of pinning insects, and there's many different types of insects, and each insect has to be pinned a certain way. Larger insects are usually pinned right through the center of the thorax. Things like uh, bees, uh, those would get pinned through the center of the thorax. Uh, flies, these also would get pinned through the center of the thorax. Um, with hemipterans, true bugs, you're pinning them through the scutellum, which is a little triangular region on the uh, thorax. And then with grasshoppers, they have a ridge on the prothorax. And so on that ridge, you, can't, you obviously can't pin it right through the ridge. You want to pin it on the right side of that ridge. There are also um, moths, butterflies, and uh, other Lepidoptera. Those you would pin through the center of the thorax. And uh, one common misconception, is, or one problem with pinning insects, is how high do you put the specimen um, on the pin. And just as a rule of thumb, you always want to pin the specimen to where you have a bit of a gap, or uh, at least a pinch, at the tip of the uh, pin here, having at least 10 millimeters in length. So you want to have 10 millimeters from the specimen to the top of the pin. Here is a pinning block. Now, when you pin your specimens, um, it's important to have your, your specimens set straight so you can pit the pin through the specimen and it doesn't go off to the side, either through a leg or through its head. It has to go straight through the center of the thorax and comes out the chest area. Basically it's a rolled up phone book that is cut in half uh, or cut in a little inch, uh, inch long uh, sheets. Uh, there are uh, pinning blocks that you can buy through BioQuip which are wooden blocks uh, with different stage levels on them. Uh, but the thing is you have to have the specimen set directly over the hole uh, when you put the pin through the specimen. So we like to use these because it's a nice flat surface to put your specimen on uh, when you're doing the pinning. So the first, uh, the first type of pinning I want to show you how to do is just normal pinning of insects. And I'm going to use bees as an example. Uh, bees are one of the types of insects where you pin them right in the center of the thorax. This is a carpenter bee um, that I'm going to show you how to properly pin. I will be pinning it through the center of the thorax, right, right here. And so there's the head, thorax, and abdomen. Insects have three major body regions. And with most insects, you're pinning them on the thorax. I'm going to hold the specimen down with my forceps. You can use your hands if you want or for larger specimens. I prefer to use a pair of forceps, especially when it's smaller insects. Um, and also if you're squeamish about handling insects, uh, for, you can use your forceps. Uh, for a large bee like this, I probably want to use a number one or number two pin. This is a number two pin. And I'm going to put the pin right through the center of the thorax. I'm going to push it down and if your pinning block is at, the, is at the right height for most specimens it'll automatically leave at least 10 millimeters at the tip here between the specimen and the tip of the pin which gives you a good grip for that specimen. We'll just double check here and yep it's 10 millimeters so just as a rule of thumb you should always have your specimens leave at least 10 millimeters between the specimen and the tip of the pin. And that way you're able to grip the specimen and you still have enough space for at least two to three labels at the bottom. Now sometimes your specimen, your legs, and the abdomen or head will stick down and you can put a piece of paper at the bottom of this to make the specimen hold in that, in that position. So if I take this piece of paper I can push the specimen down on that paper. That way the abdomen and the legs stay up, leaving enough room for two to three labels at the bottom. And when this specimen dries, I could take this piece of paper off the specimen and all the abdomen and legs should stay dried in that position. <clears throat> this is a, a smaller bee 
it's an agachloropsis and with this, uh, with this bee I'll probably use a number one pin so it's a, a thinner type of pin and I'm gonna, it's big enough though to where I can pin it and not point it so I'm gonna hold the specimen down with my forceps so it stays straight and then I slide the pin right on the thorax so here's the head, here's the thorax, here's the abdomen I push that pin all the way down and if my pinning block is at the right height it should, already, it should automatically give me 10 millimeters at the, uh, from the specimen to the tip of the pin and so there it is it's not always accurate with larger specimens things like beetles and other larger insects you'll have to adjust the tip of this pin to the right size if the specimen has the ab a lot of times with smaller specimens like this the abdomen will hang down again you can put a piece of paper underneath the specimen and slide the abdomen out you can even manipulate the antenna and legs and position it so it looks very nice and then you have the specimen on that paper and it'll dry in this position once it's dry then you can remove this paper and it'll dry in that position and again we leave at least 10 millimeters from the specimen to the top of the pin and enough space to where we can have at least two to three labels at the bottom of this pin now with most insects you pin them through the thorax. Beetles are a little bit different. Beetles, um, <clears throat> you're going to pin them on the right side of the elytra. So the elytra are the hardened wings on the outside of the body. and They usually cover part of the, pro part of the thorax and uh, the abdomen. And the reason why you pin it on the right side of that elytra is so you have a left side that is very visible uh, for identification purposes. This is a beetle. This is a, a ground beetle, predaceous ground beetle in the genus Passimachus. And this specimen is a much larger insect. And so, you, again, you would use probably a number two or number three pin for uh, something this big. And with beetles, you always want to pin them on the right side of the elytra. Here is the head, here is the prothorax, and then here is the elytra that covers part of the abdomen and part of the thorax. There's a little line right here that's hard to see on film, but there's two halves here of the elytra. And this is the hard shell that covers a pair of uh, wings underneath. Some beetles have a pair of hind wings and some, pe some beetles don't. But you always pin on the right side of the elytra. So I take my number two pin and I'm going to put pressure on the specimen with my forceps to hold it on the pinning block so it doesn't slide away and then I put the pin right through the right side of the elytra <clears throat> so when you put the pin through the right side of the elytra it looks like on this particular specimen that you're pinning it through the abdomen but if you're to look on the ventral side of this specimen here's the head this is the prothorax here's the rest of the thorax and the abdomen is actually way over here so you're technically still you're still pinning the beetle through the thorax it just doesn't look that way from the dorsal side but this is one of the this is an example of a specimen where a lot of people end up pinning it through the prothorax right here and you never pin through the prothorax you always pin through the elytra which usually covers the abdomen and so if you look at it ventrally here's the abdomen and with this specimen being so big I don't want to push the pin all the way down I want to leave enough space so we have at least 10 millimeters from the specimen to the top of the pin to be able to grip the specimen and also have enough space for two to three labels at the bottom we can double check and and it's a little bit under but that's alright you want to have about 10 millimeters plus or minus one and sometimes if the specimen see if the head is kind of sinking down or the legs are hanging down if you try to put labels on this specimen after it dries you end up breaking parts of its body so you can put a piece of paper underneath the specimen 
preferably cardstock. And then you can manipulate the body parts, the legs, head, abdomen, etc. Put them in the position how you want it, and it'll stay in that position when it dries. I could even open the mandibles here, so it gives it kind of a scary look. And then that beetle will dry in this position. Here is another type of beetle. This is a tenebrionid beetle, Eliotis sponsus. Here is the head, here is the prothorax, and here is the rest of the thorax and abdomen. The elytra covers the prothorax, uh, or part of the thorax and abdomen. There's a line right here that divides the left and right elytra. I take my forceps, hold the specimen down, and I put the pin right on the right side of the elytra. And this is another large specimen, so I don't want to push the pen all the way down because I want to leave enough space at the top of this pen for 10 millimeters. So you have 10 millimeters there, so you're able to grip the specimen, and then you still have enough space for two to three labels at the bottom.